Hello again, Kelly here. If you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. I appreciate you for being here. Um, my name is Kelly, which you probably figured that out if you clicked on my channel. So yeah, I'm babbling. Let's stop babbling, Kelly. <laughs> so today I wanted to share with you guys um, different things that you can do to still feel useful while you're battling an autoimmune disease. So when I got this lovely uh, diagnosis, I was all over the place. I was very, very active. I was fashion blogging. Um, I was doing fashion events. I was selling homes for a builder. I was doing real estate events. I had two kids that, well, my daughter had just left home, which is my last one leaving home. I just moved to a new city, uh, a new apartment, a new position, and I was all over the place. I was having the time of my life. I was like, yay, my kids are finally grown, and I am going to do all kinds of things, right? And then my body said, girl, sit down somewhere. And so when I didn't want to sit down somewhere, it made me sit down somewhere. And when you are a person that is literally dubbed by your peers as a hurricane because you are everywhere and they consider you a force of nature to so just sit down that's not cool to your ego it's not cool to your career it's not cool to a lot of the foundation if you will of who you are so i fell into this feeling that i had no purpose uh, that i was useless and that, you know, that I was just a shell of a being that I had spent over 40 years building. And now who was this new person? And why was she here? Because I don't know her. What you doing here, girl? I don't know you. Get out of here. But she wasn't leaving. She wasn't leaving. So I had to get to know her and try to figure out how to not lose her. Um, to feeling of, of, of a feeling of things that I had no power over, no control, um, that you know I could no longer work. So I felt, like I said, useless. I had no energy for even barely getting dressed, let alone doing a fashion blog where you I was in six inch heels every day, full on makeup, hair done all to the max. I mean the whole nine yards. I ain't had energy for that. I had time for that. I just wanted to sit down. And that was all I wanted to do was just sit down. So once I got beyond wanting to sit down, um, I realized that I had to find things about the new life that I enjoyed, that I loved, and I had to make a living. Because I know a lot of people assume, oh, your, your body's doing those funky things. As soon as they say you can't work, then you get disability. <laughs> ah, that's a good joke, if only doesn't work that way. So I had to figure out in the midst of my body doing what it was doing and no longer being able to work, how to get paid. What do I do? How am I going to keep eating? And so um, it was, it's was. it been a journey. I won't say it was a journey because lupus provides um, gifts that keep giving that you don't want. It's like that dog that thinks it's doing something good and brought you that dead bird or that dead rat. It thinks it's doing something wonderful and you're like, oh damn, I gotta clean that dead animal up, you know? And that's kind of how I feel about lupus. It keeps bringing me dead animals. I don't want them, you know? So every time it brings me a, a new dead animal, I have to figure out how to dispose of this animal in the most humane way without ending up with some weird extra disease that this dead animal might be carrying. So that's a good analogy, Kelly. It was a, yeah, that's a good analogy. Anyway, so I learned how to take the skills that I already had and turn them into something different. For example, um, one of the things that I do to make a living is I create graphics for people who are in real estate because I can relate to real estate. I am a social media, like I live there, that's like my second address, sadly. Um, and I am creative and I enjoy the creative process. So that's how I make a portion of my living. Something else that I do, which I've always done all of my life, I've always been a writer, thus the fashion blogging. So I parlayed 
my um, writing skills over into freelance writing. So I write for Lupus News Today is one of the things that I places I write for. I put a lot of my own articles on both LinkedIn and Medium, and Medium actually has a um, program where you can get paid for your articles. And over the years, I have put ads out like on Craigslist, and I've written blog posts for all kinds of different people, all types of different topics, uh, and that kind of thing. You can also, you know, put your stuff on places like Upwork and on Fiverr. I'll put links to those below if you want to, you know, share some of your talents and skills on those places where you can get paid as a freelancer. The other thing that I did was I revamped, if you will, um, things that I enjoyed before I found, I don't know how to explain this, I'll give you an example. I was a fashion blogger, so I would actually find designer things in consignment shops and share those you know, designer things, I would find things on sale online, share those things and then I was, you know, whatever I was wearing, I would take pictures of it, like I said, makeup, hair, the whole nine yards. So I've always been a fashion person and I've always been a creative person. Now I was buying all of my stuff out in the world, so to speak, online, at boutiques, you know, whatever that was. Well now I have a sewing machine and I'm teaching myself to sew. So my love of fashion is no longer really about clothes. I'll do a video on this one day. I'll take you all, take you all up into my sewing room. I like making purses. They're fun and they always fit. So I took my love of fashion and turned it into something else. And I turned it into something that was useful um, because, you know, I'm not the best at sewing clothes, but I occasionally will make something that I can sort of wear. It might be a little wonky, I ain't gonna lie. But if you're looking that hard at it, you're looking too hard. But, uh, and to be honest with you, for as skinny as I am, y'all, I can't find underwear. So guess what? I had to come to Queen of Panties. Yes, I have. So I can make all my own panties and I learn how to make my own little bras. So I'm golden. But, you know, the point is, is that if you have a position that you can no longer do, but you loved it, figure out a way to extract pieces of that so you keep your sanity. If you had a hobby, you know, if you were a marathoner, maybe you can't marathon anymore, but you can do videos where you talk to people about how to prepare for a marathon. You can teach people what they need to eat to make sure that they have maximum fuel. You know, there are ways that you can still partake in those hobbies, in those those careers, if you will, and turn those things into things that give you some passion. Now, I will tell you that it doesn't always feed me like what I originally did was feeding me, but it certainly does help you mentally, if nothing else, so that you know that you still have purpose, you still are useful, and you still matter. So, if you have not hit the subscribe button, what are you waiting on? If you watched this far, you liked what I had to say, so hit the subscribe button. Stop tripping, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, really. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell icon so that you'll get notified whenever I post some nonsense and shenanigans. And I uh, will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.